All right, people, we need to talk about yesterday's Nintendo Direct. I have not done a video actually discussing it in full yet, so I'm very excited to get into this with you all. Let's do it. Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Botox Games, and yes, today we are discussing the June 21st, 2023 Nintendo Direct. So if you follow me on Twitter, you've seen a lot of my opinions on this thing, but I think this was a fantastic Direct filled with fantastic announcements for the Nintendo Switch. I think it shows a lot of Nintendo's uh, uh, strives and, and goals with the Switch in terms of keeping it around for longer. I've seen people saying that I think all oh, this means the Switch 2 is coming out next year. I think it's the exact opposite. I think this Direct showed that they still have a lot of juice in the, uh, in the can in here for the Nintendo Switch, and I'm excited for pretty much every new first-party announcement here, although the Direct itself, the presentation itself, I will say, and, and starting off here, the opening was really weird and also just kind of bad. I do almost wonder, was there some sort of deal between Nintendo and the Pokemon company? Because normally Pokemon stuff is safe for Pokemon Presents. Maybe they had a deal where to get Detective Pikachu and the Scarlet and Violet DLC in the Direct, they were like, okay, we need to start the Direct then. Because starting with Scarlet and Violet DLC and actually revealing no new information is probably one of the craziest direct openers of all time. That is so lame and so boring. Even the Pokemon aren't new. I mean, this is our first time seeing in-game models of these Pokemon, but I thought this was really lame, a really bad start to the show, and it kind of just didn't get better for a little bit. This first 10-minute segment is, is just really weird. So we got a, we got the Scarlet and Violet DLC trailer, no release date, which is insane to me. Then we got Sonic Superstars uh, first Switch gameplay. Looks a little crusty, but that game does look pretty good. Still coming out this fall, no date for that. Some free-to-play farming game called Palia, and this is... Uh, <laughs> It almost gave me vibes of the t September Direct last year, where it kind of... There was parts of this Direct where I was like, wow, we're actually doing another Farming Direct. We're actually doing another one. So, Bat is a miss. Persona 5 Tactica, another trailer for that. This game, we've already seen a lot of at this point. Release date, which we knew already. And no Persona 3 Reload. So, at this point in the Direct, like, first seven minutes in, I'm just sitting here like, oh, no. This is an L. But... After this next thing, we got we got Myth Force, uh, new kind of comic style uh, FPS. Actually, looks pretty cute. Uh, coming from Aspire and Beam uh, Beam Do Beam Beam Dog Beam Dog. Yeah, that looks cute. Coming out later this year. Um, then it kind of just starts ramping up. So we get one more weird thing. We get the Splatoon 3 Splatfest announcement of uh, Team Vanilla, Strawberry, and Mint Chip for uh, for sweet treats, ice creams, uh, coming out Ju or starting on July 14th through the 16th. Cool. Announcing new Splatfest. It makes sense. Splatoon 3 is big. Not even a single hint of the side order DLC, though. That is really weird. I, I, I can't believe that, honestly. And I think this is our first sign, and it's exciting for me as, as a content creator, but also just a huge Nintendo fan. We're definitely getting a September Direct. We are absolutely getting one. This The side order DLC will be there, and I'm, I'm super excited about that. So uh, Splatoon 3 had a kind of weird showing there, but then it just gets better. The Direct just kind of ramps up from here. We get like five first-party Nintendo games announced in a row. It's really weird. The pacing of this Direct is very weird. So the first thing we see is Detective Pikachu Returns, which... Uh, we, we had kind of had rumored that it, be, it would be showing up here. Actually, every first party game was rumored pretty much, except for a couple. Um, but Detective Pikachu returns October 6th. I have not played Detective Pikachu in 3DS. I'm definitely going to go back and do that now. I am sorry if you're excited for this game. I'm cautiously, like, I'll play it and I'll check it out for sure. I think this game looks absolutely horrible graphically. I cannot believe how bad it looks, and it's it's just specific shots, you know, sometimes it looks fine, like the character models of the humans, is it's fine, but then there are certain shots with like the lighting and there's no shadows, and it, it looks like a Wii game, and I know people always say that, but like it, it actually does, <laughs> it actually does, which is just so surprising to me because Detective Pikachu on 3DS is a beautiful game, maybe it's because it's running in 240p or whatever, but... That game looks great on 3DS. So it's like they didn't really update it. it just they, they blew up a 3DS game and put it in HD or something. It does not look good. Um, but I'm happy to see it come back finally. Obviously, this was announced back in 2019. So to see Detective Pikachu return, pun intended, is uh, it's exciting. It's exciting for sure. And that's our first uh, first party game coming after Pikmin 4 now, which is uh, something we'll need to talk about in another video because I've seen a lot of people talking about the gap between Pikmin 4 and uh, Detective Pikachu. Next up, we go into an absolute banger potentially one of the best announcements of the direct one of the best game announcements of the year honestly i think this game looks fantastic super mario rpg remake i cannot believe how good this remake looks 
I was talking with my friend Caleb about uh, the Mario franchise before the Direct happened, because a lot of the stuff leaked, Mario RPG leaked, and we were saying that we weren't sure how they would make it look. We were saying, like, oh, we're worried it'll look like kind of like the Mario plus Rabbit, just like sterile, this is what 3D Mario looks like. And I think this might actually be the first time we've gotten a, a Mario game using 3D models that isn't like that. Which is just so exciting, and of course we'll get to Mario Bros. Wonder later, but to see this new this new era almost of Mario starting where you can have all these different art styles is very exciting to me. Um, it, it I think for the Nintendo fan that likes Styles in Your Door, that likes Mario and Luigi, this is nothing but good news because it means that Nintendo is willing to have weird stuff in a Mario game again. They're, they're okay with it being weird, and... Overall, man, this this remake looks fantastic. November 17th, sorry, Persona 5 Tactica, eat your heart out. Uh, I am so excited for this. I've never played Mario RPG, but what we saw, you know, Mario running around the environments, it looks like the box art. It it honestly looks... I can't believe how good it looks. This is one of the, my favorite looking Switch games, I think, just aesthetically. Obviously, you know, graphically, it's not like a powerhouse or anything, but just from, like, art direction and obviously the music with Yoko Shimamura coming back, this game looks really good so i'm very very excited uh for super mario rpg weird they got rid of the subtitle but you know what you got to do what you got to do and then this is this the hyper weird section of the direct which i might do a whole video just talking about this and and kind of like the idea that maybe switch 2 is further off in my opinion um although some people took the opposite meaning from this we got two game announcements back to back for 2024 and they kind of didn't really tell us anything so the first thing we got was a quick teaser for a brand new game starring princess peach and in this trailer she's on like a stage play looking thing with like these cardboard cutouts it looks, looks like a stage play um and it's a princess peach game she stands on a little pedestal she changes her dress or something she doesn't have a crown on which is interesting uh coming out in 2024 no title no real details it's like a 15 second teaser very weird announcement, but very exciting. And I'll do a whole video talking about this game later, but I do wonder who is making it. I'm getting the next level vibes from this, the team that makes Luigi's Mansion. That's that's kind of what I'm feeling. But speaking of Luigi's Mansion, uh, and I, I posted my reaction to this. Some people are angry at me for being so negative. I'm more or less as being a little, a little, a little shithead. But Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon coming to Switch next year, 2024. No release date, no no like title pop up like they do with most games in the direct. Um, it's cool. It's cool that it's coming to Switch, and I really hope they clean it up enough and maybe make me love Dark Moon like I just haven't in the past, but, uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, and it, it's, it's nice to see more 3DS stuff, too. We're getting so many GameCube games, and while, yes, obviously, what I wanted was Luigi's Mansion 1, to have the variety of a 3DS game thrown in there is nice, and it's, it's nice to see that Nintendo isn't gonna forget that platform, and they are gonna keep porting stuff. I think that's a good sign for... Luigi's Mansion 1, I think, will still happen eventually. Maybe not on Switch, but next console or something. Kid Icarus Uprising, um, the Fire Emblem 3DS games. There's a lot on the 3DS library they can kind of tap for ports and just kind of padding out the release schedule. So, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon coming to Switch next year. Uh, that's exciting. Then we get to some more headlines. Batman Arkham Trilogy coming this fall. I was not expecting this. We had heard that Return to Arkham might be coming to Switch. I never thought they would get Arkham Knight, though, on Switch. Because that is a PS4 and Xbox One game. Um, so visually from the trailers i would need to rewatch it i thought it looked pretty good for a switch game uh for switch ports so that's exciting for people that love the arkham games i've never played them so maybe i'll finally give those a go we got a trailer for gloomhaven don't have much to say on that just dance 2024 i muted my stream very quickly <laughs> uh silent hope from xseed games this was kind of interesting if it reminded me of um oninaki if you've played that but maybe more chibi oninaki of course was that screen x game by the people that made i am setsuna but uh, yeah, Silent Hope from Xe that looks cute. Kind of mobile game-esque, but I don't know. I'm interested in that. Coming October 3rd, Fae Farm, another farming game. I think this game looks horrible visually. It's a $60 game. I cannot believe it. <laughs> I'm sure like the people that love farming games are excited for it. But I also wonder, how many of these games can you possibly want? Every Direct has like a ton of them. And I, I get it. Not every game is going to be for me. But how many farming games can kind of farming game fan want? Because typically with those games, at least the ones I've played... You kind of play that one, and then that's just what you play. You either play Animal Crossing, you play, you know, Stardew Valley, you play Story of Seasons, and that's it. You don't play a bunch of them, I didn't think, but maybe maybe, maybe the times have changed. Maybe I'm a boomer when it comes to the farming games. Trailer for Hot Wheels Unleashed 2. This game kind of looks like doo-doo on Switch, but I'll be playing it on PS5. Manic Mechanics, July 13th. This is a overcooked mechanic game where you just build cars. I'm so tired of this, this clear copying of overcooked. It's, it's getting really old. 
uh, moving moving out I think it's it's called and there's just a bunch of these kinds of like quirky oh what if there was a, a hectic multiplayer game I'm tired of it stop 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 copying overcooked for the love of God we got a trailer for Mario plus rabbit sparks of hope uh the last bark hunter and actually that DLC is out now it's shadow dropped which is hype I have not finished sparks of hope I need to get back to that but this DLC actually looks really good and I'm excited for the the Rayman DLC uh, coming later this year or maybe next year then we got the uh, reveal trailer for a game we kind of knew about dragon quest monsters the dark prince coming out december 1st 2023 so square enix had revealed this game or confirmed it was happening back in may i got the impression from that announcement that press release that oh we're not gonna see this for a couple years nope it's coming out this year graphically it doesn't look like anything too impressive but i've heard dragon quest monsters is just dragon quest pokemon and that definitely speaks to me so i'll probably be checking this out and i do like the uh the pretty much annualized annualization of dragon quest that we're seeing at this point because now we're getting this this year next year i would hope and pray that we're finally getting dragon quest 3 hd 2d and then probably the following year dragon quest 12 so dragon quest every year very nice dragon quest monsters coming back makes a lot of sense then we got a deeper dive into pikmin 4 this game looks fantastic uh not much to say on it because we've seen so much at this point but i love the new glow pikmin and the new weird olimar like I don't even know Ram Rambutan looking thing. I don't know. I don't know what that mode was with like the castaways, but Pikmin 4 looks fantastic. And then we got the surprise release of Pikmin 1 and 2 coming to Switch later today, available now on the eShop with a physical release coming June 20 or sorry, September 22nd. So very exciting there. I love more ports. I love getting just all these games up and running on Switch. So they're kind of just safe for the future moving forward. And Pikmin 1 and 2 are great games. Pikmin 4 looks fantastic. P uh, also a demo for Pikmin 4 dropping on June 28th. So it's nice that every Pikmin game will be on Switch. All the ones that matter anyway. Shout out to Hey Pikmin. <laughs> <laughs> then we got the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1 for Switch announced. Uh, releasing, I believe, October 24th. Getting a physical release, although the physical doesn't have any games on the cartridge, which is a Konami moment right there. Um, but Metal Gear Solid coming to Switch, that's exciting. I've never played any of those games, so I'm excited to check that out. Then we're getting Vampire Survivors on Switch. My girlfriend's very excited about this. Vampire Survivors is fantastic. Genuinely one of the best games from 2022 uh, coming to Switch with a new co-op mode, which is super exciting. Headbangers Rhythm Royale, this is another one that kind of just looks to me. I look at it, and I'm like, oh, Fall Guys, but music. And I'm just like, I don't. I, I, it looks fine. It looks fine. But I'm just like, I'm tired of stuff like this. I'm so tired of seeing games like this. Not just in directs and, and Summer Games Fest and, and play. I'm just tired of it all around. <laughs> but I, I know there's an audience for them. It's just not for me. But um, the next game was really exciting. Penny's Big Breakaway. This is from Christian Whitehead and the, the Sonic Mania team. This is a 3D platformer being private, uh, being published by Private Division, sorry, in early 2024. This looked really cool. A 3D sonic mania style platformer obviously sega inspired if you look at this game it, it oozes that like 90s sega charm so this looks fantastic and uh, i don't believe it's exclusive to switch but that looks very very good next up we saw a new trailer for the mario kart 8 deluxe booster course pass uh this is wave five we only saw one new track but it is a brand new track not from tour it's mario's bathroom uh with three new playable characters pd piranha wiggler and kamek so that's exciting but once again like the splatoon dlc no release date that is weird so i think this pretty heavily indicates a a september direct in my opinion not that that was much question we always get one but still um definitely helping with that theory next up square enix announced star ocean the second story r i have never played star ocean i am going to change that this year i think this remake looks fantastic in fact i think this looks better than like the hd 2d games they do like octopath it's 3d environments with these 2d sprites and it looks really good really high budget for this remake too it's getting a physical release which is hype uh, november 2nd so soon i i love square enix and just how many remakes and just weird very japanese japanese rpgs they release it's very nice if someone who doesn't get to most of them it's just nice to see them doing it consistently so i'm going to be there to support it even if i don't get around to playing it too soon i'm going to support this game because i want screen x to keep doing stuff like this because this looks really good um you know it's not as high budget as like the trials of mana remake but i don't think it needs to be because i think this looks better than trials of mana <laughs> if they made like a chrono trigger like this That'd be pretty good. Then a huge surprise announcement that I don't think anybody expected. A new WarioWare game was announced. We don't know the developer, I don't believe. We don't know if it's Intelligent Systems. Oh, no, it is. I'm stupid. It is developed by Intelligent Systems. I was wondering maybe it was developed by NDQ because there's some party game elements here. But this is essentially a direct sequel to WarioWare Smooth Moves from the Wii, which is awesome. WarioWare Get It Together came out not even two years ago at this point. 
that game's fine. Like, I enjoyed it. But it wasn't what I wanted out of WarioWare. When, when you know, the Switch was coming out, everybody was like, oh, we're going to get WarioWare, switch it up, and you're going to be doing crazy stuff with the Joy-Con. We're finally getting that, so to see that is very nice. It looks very refreshing. We're getting all these moments where you're, you know, you're sliding in the, the red carpet for Mario 64 DS or, or, you know, playing Pikmin in these little minigames. This looks fantastic. I'm a little bummed there's no... Uh, no rhythm heaven game intelligence systems but wario we're moving november 3rd coming out very soon and it looks like a ton of fun and then it kind of gets weird again they talk about nintendo live and as somebody's going to pax west nintendo live is the bane of my existence right now because there's no way to actually confirm entry which is annoying but whatever they revealed two new amiibo for tears of the kingdom zelda and ganondorf coming holiday 2023 no dlc mentioned I might do a whole video talking about that because I think that is very interesting. And at this point, I'm not really sure um, if they'll even do DLC. They probably will. They probably will. But maybe just a little bit too soon for that. And then finally, the final game announced was Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Coming out October 20th, 2023. I did a full video with Caleb analyzing the trailer and giving our thoughts on this. So I won't speak too much on it right now. But this game looks absolutely phenomenal. In fact, I... Listen, I'm not like a... I, I like 2D Mario. I've played all of them. I'm not typically getting excited and hyped up at this level for a 2D Mario game. This, to me, reads almost as exciting as like a 3D Mario game. And I know that's crazy. And maybe it's just because it's been so long since I felt like the 3D Mario hype cycle. It's been five years, six years. But this game looks like something really special. I think Mario Bros. Wonder looks... It looks incredible. They, they really nailed the art style, the music, just aesthetically, animations, everything, the gameplay design. It just looks so good and interesting and completely different from New Super Mario Bros., which is what the series needed. So that is going to do it for this video. This was a fantastic direct. It had a weird start, but in terms of first-party new announcements, we got... Let's count the first party games and we're going to count just first party games that were basically new here. So the reason I say that is because Detective Pikachu was already kind of confirmed, but uh, Detective Pikachu, that's one. Then we got uh, Super Mario RPG, that's two. Then we got the Peach game, three. Luigi's Mansion Dark Rune, four. Uh, then we got Pikmin 1 and 2 HD, so we'll count that as one. That's five. Then we got WarioWare, six. And then Super Mario Bros. Wonder, seven. That is one of the most packed Nintendo Directs of all time. Now, I get it. Yeah, Mario RPG remake, Pikmin 1 and 2 ports the uh, dark moon remaster sure but as someone who has been wondering what the, the the future of the switch looks like after pikmin this direct answered everything i wanted to hear and more because i did not like the february nintendo direct because all they announced was metroid prime remastered and as good as metroid prime remastered may be that's lame so this direct nailed it for me I, I really really like this direct and even third party stuff dragon quest monsters is in there uh, vampire survivors coming i know it's an indie game but that's really exciting star ocean r this was a really good direct um there were some pacing issues at the start and i do wonder where prime 4 is i do wonder what's going on with this platoon dlc why was that not shown but overall this was a fantastic show nine out of ten for me easily let me know your thoughts though down in the comments below and let me know what videos you would like to see first there's obviously a lot to dissect i'll probably do a video independently on each game announced for each first party game but also the idea that this does mean switch 2 is coming out later than we expected in, in my opinion or or maybe the idea that there could have another game this year which i do think that isn't announced right now there's a lot to talk about let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and until next time folks peace